guess what? I have the RGB RAM now. Only two things I really need some RGB on is the graphics cards and the solid state drive. Okay guys, let's just do a real quick closer look at these ballistics um, memory modules here. Um, these guys look great and, and that's kind of what I want to point out. I mean, when you look at this heat spreader design, the tactical tracer, it's kind of rugged, but kind of professional looking. It's just, it's very sharp. And I really appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of RGB LED RAM that just looks very, very flamboyant. And sometimes that doesn't look, feel like it's gonna fit very well in your build. But I don't feel like Ballistics is making that mistake and that's nice. Now, they have these light bars here and something that's pretty cool about this, and we're gonna address this later on hopefully. Um, I, I couldn't get everything together in time, so we're, we'll hopefully get to this later. But you can 3D print your own light bars to put different patterns in here. And so all you have to do is, if you'll notice, we've got two little black tabs here. And all you have to do is just kind of if you can't quite grab it, you can just push it from the other side till it, till it pops out just a little tiny bit. And then if you can just get that guy to pull out, do the same thing here. Pull those two tabs out, and they're not too hard to pull out. Then this whole light bar will just slide right out. And that way, you can also, if you just don't like the light bars, then you can also use that so you can look right directly at the LED lighting without the light bar. Really impressive design. Let's go ahead and talk about some actual performance on these dudes. So guys, when it comes to benchmarks on RAM, I mean, probably my the all-time favorite benchmark is A to 64. And you know, looking at our numbers, well, we're not doing too bad. I mean, if you look at the overclocking that we've got going on on this RAM kit, dang, we were able to pull some pretty impressive numbers. Obviously with a benchmark like ADA, the biggest benefit that we are seeing is with higher RAM speeds. And I mean, that's not even just on the read, write, and copy numbers. All those things were favoring, you know, 3600 megahertz on that overclock, but even the latency was showing, okay, yeah, we really like that overclock speed, and that's fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, pushing this RAM to 3600 megahertz, wow. And I believe I would have had more room if I could have just had, I think it was just my board limited it. I could have easily probably gotten another step or so up if I had, you know, a little bit better board, maybe one of the latest from Intel or even an um, X470 chipset. So overclocking, performance, numbers look great. But when we get to gaming, we really start just seeing that it's not a huge difference. In fact, what's really surprised me is if you look at Ashes of the Singularity, we've got some, you know, some very minor increases as we step up. Far Cry 5 surprised me because it seemed to benefit more from, from the full 32 gigs with the, mo with the moderate overclock than it did from 16 gigs with a really high overclock. So it just goes to show, guys, that really gaming... If you're getting RAM to get higher frames per second, you're not really spending your dollar the best. The simple fact of the matter is, is 2600 speeds are gonna be just as about as good as 3600 megahertz speeds. So, you know, use, use your discretion depending on how your budget works. Ballistics though, man, that was some awesome performing RAM. Do you ever get in the middle of a video and you realize, hmm, I forgot to look at the price on that product that I was reviewing? <laughs> Just happened to me. But, all right, back to the pricing. This kit for 32 gigs is a pretty eye-watering $409 on Newegg. And, you know, compared to other RAM kits, it's also one of the highest ones up there. 
Now, normally that would be a problem, but you know, even a G Skill Trident Z is only about nah, about 10, 20 bucks behind what Ballistics is offering. That's going to, I think, hurt them to some degree, but when you look at the optimize the options they have to do customization, printing your own light bars and various levels like that, that's pretty awesome. And honestly, guys, I might have stuck with just a great hardware award, but dang, these guys overclocked great. I mean, the fact that I could push an extra thousand megahertz out of them just by upping the voltage and going to town, that's pretty fantastic. So as a result, they're not gonna quite hit must have status, but I would still definitely say Editor's Choice was very, very pleased with this kit. Also worked great with the Ryzen platform that I tested on, that's a plus too. So there you go guys. I'm gonna have some other videos dedicated to things like the software. I'll have a video eventually too that'll go in a little more detail with overclocking. I'll also have a video up there that is um, just the RGB lighting to kind of separate that out a little bit, to kind of, you know, give the information more specifically to what people are looking for. That's all I have on this video. I'll catch you later.